In this video, I'll show you how you can track your time inside of Notion so that you can see where your team is spending their time and get better at estimating how long it takes things to get done so that you can manage your capacity a bit more easily. If you want to shortcut the build time, you can check out the link down below in the description to get this exact setup inside your workspace. So without further ado, let's dive in. So to achieve this build, I really just need two databases. First of all, I need a time sheets database that I have here at the top. And right now this is just a blank database. And then we also just need a task database. Anything where we store our tasks, we assign tasks is fine. So to start, let's dive in with the timesheets database. And the way this entire setup is going to work is essentially we are going to be able to make new timesheet logs that are associated to our tasks. And we can do multiple timesheets for one particular task. So for example, improve website copy. On one day, we may track two hours. On another day, we may track three hours. And then overall, we'll be able to see how much time we've tracked for this overall task. So first of all, we need a mechanism to basically track time within this database. And the way we do that is using a start and stop date and time property. So we are going to first of all, bring in two date properties. This one we can call start. And then we can also duplicate this one and we're going to call this stop. And so essentially, if we were to create a new time sheet here, so this is an example time sheet, we might say that we started this particular session today and the time was, let's say it was 10 a.m. So that started from today till 10 a.m. and we stopped this time sheet at today at 11 a.m. So obviously just using some quick maths, we know that this timesheet is tracked one hour, but what we can do is add a formula property to show that. So I'm gonna add a formula property in here and I'm gonna call this tracked minutes. So the way we're gonna do that in this formula is using the date between function. So I'm gonna search date between and I can see it here. And we're basically gonna find the date between the start and stop points, but format it for minutes. So I'm going to say the date between the stop and the start date. I want to show this in minutes, which I do by doing in a speech marks like so. And so now if I save that, just by doing that, I can see this particular timesheet on this particular day tracked 60 minutes. Now that's all I need in terms of the actual tracking of the time itself, super simple. Now the next thing I need to do is actually relate it over to the task database. So let's go ahead and create a relation to the task database using our relation property. And we're gonna make this a two-way relation as we wanna bring in some of the other properties into the task database and we'll choose add relation. Now I'm gonna rename this to related tasks and I can give it an icon if I like. And so now what I can even do is start to show that this 60 minute session was for any three of these tasks. So let's say this 60 minute session was for that improved website copy. And so now we can see that over here. So now we've set up the timesheets database. Let's go ahead and set up the task database. Now for the task database, the first thing I wanna show is how much time has been tracked. And this information is obviously stored in the timesheets database. So I need to basically pull that information in. But what's also important is the fact that I might also have multiple timesheet sessions for one task. So if I do timesheet two here, and let's say it was from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And this was also for the improved website copy. Now this particular task has two timesheets. And so I want to see the sum of both of those tracked minutes to show that the overall track time for this task is two hours. So to do that, I'm going to create a formula property. And I'm going to call this again, tracked minutes. And here I'm going to use Notion's map function. So I'm going to choose map. Then I'm going to choose our timesheets relation. I want to, from the timesheets, use the current variable. And that's gonna allow me to come and find all of the different properties within the timesheet database, a bit like a rollup uh, would do. And I want to find the tracked minutes property, and then I can do brackets. Now that would just bring in them as a list. So now I need to use the dot sum equation. And now that's actually going to sum up both of these um, minutes. So if I hit save, you'll now see in the tracked minutes section, 
I've got 120 minutes because I have done two sessions of 60 minutes. So as a bare bones, this setup is working. We've got a way to track multiple sessions for a task and for us to see the total minutes for that task. But obviously right now, this isn't a very nice thing to use. If we wanna track minutes, we have to come to the timesheets database, create a new timesheet, we have to enter the information for the start and stop points manually, toggling on this include time. We have to relate it to the task itself. And I know working with clients, no one would end up using this if this was the actual setup. So instead in the task database where the task is actually being completed, let's create a start and stop button that anyone can easily click to start their session. So to do that, I'm going to create a new property and choose our button property. The first one I will do is the start button. And now let's go into the automation builder to build this out. So what we want this automation to do is whenever this button is clicked, it's going to create a new entry in the timesheets database and that timesheet is going to be related to this task. So to do that, we're gonna do new action. We're going to say add page to. From our databases, we're going to find our timesheets database. Now the name property isn't all that important, so I'm gonna leave that blank for now. But what I do want to do is first find the related tasks relation, and I'm going to set that to this page. So the actual automation or the page that's been triggered by the automation, we want to relate that in the timesheets related tasks relation to this page. What we also want to do is find that start date and set that start date to the time this automation was triggered. Now for the name property, I could just remove this and that would mean that the timesheet would be given the name untitled. But rather than doing that, what I'll actually do is in here, I'm gonna use the formula and I'm gonna set this to time triggered as well, just so the timesheet has the same name as when the time triggered was. So if we hit save, we can go ahead and test this. So let's do this again for improved website copy. I'm gonna hit start. And now you'll see inside of the timesheets database on April 29th at 10.16, which is the exact, si exact time now, we have been given it to the start date of this time. And also it's been related to the improved website copy. So that's working perfectly. Now we need a way to stop the time. So we're going to bring in another property called stop using our button property again. So what we want this automation to do is basically find that timesheet that is associated with the start button. And we want that to um, find that timesheet and then set the stop date to this time that we've clicked this stop button. So the way we do this is actually by using Notion's variables to find that uh, exact timesheet. So in the actions, I'm going to choose the define variables option. And this variable we can rename to timesheet. And then in here, I'm going to edit this as a formula. And what I want to say is this page, which again is the task that has been triggered with this stop button. So from this page, we want to find the timesheets, the related timesheets. And so amongst all of the timesheets that have been related out of all those different sessions, we want to find the one that hasn't got the stop date completed, hasn't got it filled in. And that will identify it as the one that's the current session that we're tracking. So to do that, I'm gonna do the filter option by doing dot filter. Then we want to choose that the stop uh, button is empty, so empty. And then we're going to find out of all of the properties, the stop property, and then finish that with two brackets here and hit save. So that should hopefully find the timesheet. Now the next thing we need to do is actually edit that timesheet. So we're going to add another action and we're going to say edit pages in. And then instead of selecting a database, we're going to select our timesheet variable, which is going to be this exact um, database entry. And then here, what we're going to do is edit a property. We're going to find the stop property. And then just like we did for the start property, we're going to set this to time triggered and hit save. So now what we should see is in the improved website copy tasks, we have three related timesheets. And out of these three related timesheets, only one of them have a stop um, property not filled in. So hopefully when we hit this stop property, it should find that. And as you can see, we can now see that this is filled in as the stop for uh, 1021 and the track minutes is five minutes. And then also because we've got the tracked minutes overall, it's now shown for this task, we've tracked 125 minutes overall. 
So just by following those simple steps, you can have your own time tracking function inside of Notion. But in the last part of this video, let's go a step further and add a few more complexities to this to make this even more powerful. So one thing this current setup doesn't do is allow us to see who actually tracked time for each of these different time sessions. So in some cases, it might be that improved website copy was uh, assigned to me. And so obviously all of these timesheets were probably completed by me. But for other tasks, you might have multiple people working on the task or the, per the original assignee might have been taken over by someone else. And so it would not, not be nice to see who exactly actually tracks the time. So to do this, what we can do is in the timesheets database, add a, another property, the person property. And I like to call this the participants, the person who actually did the time session. And so now we have this participant property, we need to edit our start and stop automations to basically fill this information in for us. So for the start automation, we'll come to edit automation. And all we need to do is when we're adding the page to the timesheets database, we need to edit one more property, which is the participant. And that we need to say it's whoever clicked the button. So essentially I'll test this now, but whenever I hit start for this particular task, it's going to create a new timesheet and I'm going to be added as the participant. If someone else had clicked the button, they would be put in as the participant. Then for the stop button, we need to edit the automation and there's not immediately anything that you would notice that we need to change. But what we might like to do is in the case that if two people are actually working on a task at the same time, and they have just so happened to both start a session at the same time, we want to make sure that we can identify who is stopping the session and stop only their session and not the other person's active session. It's a bit of a rare occasion, but it's always nice to have this um, feature laid in. So to do that, let's edit the variables by coming in here. And we're just gonna remove that first bracket because we're going to add a and function to this, to the end of this formula. And we're going to say that the current, and again, this is pulling from the timesheets relation. So this now shows us all of the timesheets properties. So we want to say that the current participant, and as this would be shown as a list, we need to make sure that this is uh, one single um, option. So what we can do is use the first function just to avoid that, even though typically it would only be one participant in the participant property. And then we want to say that this should equal, and then we can choose from here the whoever clicked option and we can close out the bracket. So essentially this is now finding from um, the uh, related timesheets of this task, any where the stop property is uh, not filled in or is empty and that the participant um, that is showing is actually whoever clicked this button and we can hit save. And just to show you that this works, if I was to create another timesheet that was for someone else, let's say John, and the start date was also missing and it was for this improved website copy. Now, when I hit stop, hopefully this will only stop my one and not stop John's one. So if I hit stop, you'll see now that it stops this one, giving it a tracked minutes of four. And again, it's updated our overall tracked minutes. Another thing I'd like to do is just to make it really obvious to whoever is tracking their time in Notion that they are still tracking their time and so they don't accidentally forget and uh, track for 48 hours and not realize they're still tracking time. So an easy way to do this is if I come to the statuses, I can add a new status in the in progress section and call this tracking. And I'll make this red, give it a exclamation mark to make this super obvious for whoever's on the task. Now what I can do is again, edit my uh, automations here. And in the action, I can say edit pages in. And from this option where I'm selecting a database, I can say this page. And what I want to do is set the status to tracking and hit save. So again, now what I can do is out of all of my tasks, if I'm over here and I decide to start a task, when I hit start, it's gonna move this over to tracking so I can see that I'm tracking the time. And then in my stop automation, at the end of this automation, what I can also do is do another edit pages in. Again, find this particular page and I'm going to edit the status and I'm gonna set this back to in progress and hit save. So now I can be tracking my time, see that I'm tracking my time and then also I can hit stop and it's gonna move it back to in progress and so I know I've officially stopped the tracking. And the final little optimization that I would like to make 
is that although we have this tracked minutes here, um, people don't tend to think in minutes, they tend to think in hours and minutes. And so I'd just like to format this property so it's easy to understand. Now I'm just gonna do a quick thing here and create the formula. I'm gonna call this tracked. And then in the edit formula, I'm just going to paste in my own formula. But what I'll do is I'll link this down below in the description so you can grab it for yourself. But essentially all this is doing is it's taking our tracked minutes property here in the task database and it's working out from how many minutes that is and converting it into hours and minutes. Obviously, if it was less than an hour, it would just show the minutes but if it was more than an hour, it will show hours and minutes, or if it was bang on an hour, it would just show hours. So if I hit save, hopefully we should now see our 120 minutes of tracked minutes has been uh, formatted in the two hour, nine minutes that we would typically understand this for. So once I'm done with this, I can actually clean up this database. I can hide the timesheets relation because we don't need to see that. I can also hide the track minutes because that is just doing a bit of back end. And so now what we get is a really clean way of tracking our time just from the task database. And in the back end, we have all of the timesheets here. If you'd like to grab this exact setup with a few more advanced features, you can check out Agency HQ using the link down below in the description. It's the Notion template that's been trusted now by over 500 different agency owners. And as well as having this time tracking, it has a way to manage your clients, your deals, your content, as well as a whole bunch more. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye-bye.